Did you know that plants have eggs? They may not look like the eggs we're used to, but hiding inside these flowers are eggs. We're going to dissect this Alstroemeria or Peruvian lily, and I'm going to show you how to draw a diagram and label it of the different parts of a flower. The first thing I'm going to do is pull off this bud and the leaves so that I can focus clearly on the flower and it, the parts. We have, as you can see, these three larger sections here. These are called sepals and I'm going to gently pull the three sepals off. One, ooh, two, I'm going to place that there, we'll come back to this later. Just going to focus on the sepals. So these three are called sepals and they are often there to give support to the petals and to protect the flower when it's in a bud. So if we get the bud, here you can see one, two, three sepals and they are providing the structure and support for this bud. As they grow in this particular species of plant, the Alstroemeria, they become a lot more colourful. Some plants, the sepals just stay green. Now, these three inner sections are the petals. So we've got three sepals and three petals. And you can see the petals are much pointier and thinner. Oop, another bit coming off there. I'm just going to put those there. We'll come back to those later. Take the last petal off. And there we have the three petals and the three sepals. Let's come back to these two sections here. These are the male part of the flower and they are called the stamen. They are made up of two parts. I'll show you this a bit closer. The stamen is made up of the long, thin filament and at the top it has the anther. This is an anther and it's covered with pollen. You can see some pollen has just come off of my finger. Now they both look a little different. The reason being that this is covered with a pollen cap and it protects it before the flower is ready to reveal it like this. So we have again the filament and the anther. Inside this pollen cap is also an anther that's hiding and it will be revealed soon. Let's have a look at this. You can see on here that one of the pollen caps is actually wobbly. So at some point the flower would have released it and then it would have revealed the anther full of pollen. I'm going to carefully remove those now. These flowers have six of them. So very gently and carefully I'm going to take off each stamen and line them up. And the next job now is to take a look inside this part of the flower. Here we have the female part of the flower. This at the very top is the stigma tube going down is called the style and this round larger area is the ovary and in there if we dissect it we might be lucky enough to see a few ovules or eggs. The first thing I'm going to do is gently take off the stigma and style and I'll leave it there. And the next thing to do is to cut across 
the ovary and hopefully we can reveal some egg-like structures. In this close-up view, you can see I'm carefully teasing out the tiny ovules inside this ovary. This section that I've pulled out here are several ovules all clumped together and attached. And here they are, lots of little ovules all attached together. In order to prepare our flower for our diagram, I'm going to remove at least one of the sepals and one of the petals. That gives me a better view of the area down here that I need to draw. What I'm also going to do, and if you're younger and you're dissecting a flower, please ask for help. I'm going to cut into the ovary so that I can get a clear view of the ovules and inside the ovary. I'm now going to show you how to draw a diagram of the parts of a flower. I'm going to use pen so it's easier for you to see, but you may want to use pencil. I'm going to start by drawing the stem and the ovary. Make sure you get wider where the ovary is. Come round and slightly in. Same on the other side. I'm then going to draw inside the ovary here. It's an oval shape. I can see there's a little line down the middle and off the line come little eggs. A closer up version of that, come down round the egg, down a little bit round the egg, down and round, down and round. The next thing we're going to do is draw around just the top of the ovary. I'm just going to finish that off there. Because we know that the ovary was closed. And from the ovary, we saw earlier coming up the female part, which is the style and the stigma. And the stigma was just slightly curved and thin that back down the style. Around the stigma and style, I'm going to draw the anthers and the filament, the male part of the flower. We've just drawn the female part and we're now going to do the surrounding male part. And you might remember there was a long filament with an anther on the top that had pollen. So you can do the little dots for the pollen. And there were six of these. Some of them were longer and some of them were shorter and some of them had a larger pollen cap. which was a greenish colour. Once you've drawn six of those, we'll then work on the sepals and petals.
you can draw some of the anthers behind the others. A following the line down behind. One, two, three, four, five. We have one more to do. Might do a short one with a pollen cap just behind here. So now we have the stigma and style, the ovary with the ovules. We have the filaments and anthers and pollen caps. Now we're going to get the two petals and the two sepals there left because we did take some off earlier. I'm going to go down. I'm going to begin with this petal. I'm going to go down to the top of the ovary and I'm going to come up with a curved line. Inside that, a little way up, I'm going to gently join that line. I'm going to curve over to a point and come back in. This is the top of the petal curving over. This is the back part of the petal. We're going to do this petal here now. And part of it's going to be hidden in among the anthers. So find a place for yourself in among the anthers you've drawn and curve up to a point. Keep it thin and curve back down and find your way down through the anthers until it disappears behind. We now have two petals. We took the other petal off so we won't draw it. Let's move on to the much wider sepals. I'm going to start up and along the edge of the petal. Not right up, but a little way up. I'm going to curve out, nice and fat round, to a little point, and then fatten round the other side. I'm also going to do this curved line down the middle of the sepal. Now for the other sepal on the other side. For this one, I'm going to start behind the petal. Again, I'm going to make it nice and fat and round with a little point. Continue fat and round and bring it down to the ovary. Let's do the middle line down the middle, the decoration here and on the other side. So we have two sepals and two petals. It's now time to label the parts of the flower. I'm going to begin with the female part. So we have the ovary, and we have, I'm labeling one egg, which is an ovule. Later on, these will become the seeds, and this whole area will become the fruit that we like to eat, like tomatoes or cherries. We have the long bit that comes up, which is the style. Style with a Y. Y L E. And the very top of it is the stigma. We then have the male part of the flower. So we remember the bit with the pollen on is called the anther. We can label one bit of pollen. And the long thin tube that holds the anther up is the filament.
The pollen, the anther and the filament are all the male parts and they are called together the stamen. Here, filament, anther and pollen, all three of them are the stamen. We have the wider outer sepal. We have the much thinner petal. course we have the stem, and there we have the parts of the flower. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new about the parts of a flower. Do leave me a comment in the comment section below, I love hearing from anyone who enjoys my tutorials and if you're interested in looking at any of my other artwork check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Nash Henkel Art.